Hey, what's up guys? Henry coming to you at live at 3.21 a.m. But I just wanted to make a quick Power Apps videos to show you guys how to make your Power Apps go a bit faster. So bear with me if I'm you know, struggling with my words because it is 3.21 a.m. But yeah, let me give you the quick overview here. So basically, if you remember, if you watched my stock ticker video, um, my stock tickers here are making API calls to uh, a stock ticker website that just responds with some data that you know displays these stock tickers. So if I've typed in Tesla here and then I submit it, then it's going to come back with my Tesla data. And then NVIDIA, same thing, it's going to come back with the NVIDIA data. And you can see here that it's got NVIDIA is trading at 563.81. And this, this goes for anything. It doesn't have to be stock tickers. This is anything with your Power Apps. So I'm making three API requests here. One, two, three. And if we submit our API request here, it goes well, but it takes kind of long. Um, the, the, this request itself takes about three seconds for me. And then, um, you know, if, if you're piling on these requests, if you have like 10 requests, that, that would be a long time and be really bad for your user, uh, user thing, user interface and your user experience. So 10 seconds is a long time when you're trying to get something done and you might, you know, get distracted. So it'll really decrease productivity. So you really want to speed up the process of your power apps. And this could be calls to, you know, your Microsoft data databases too. So it might, it might be kind of slow there. Now, I want to provide one quick way that you can speed up the processes of your calls or whatever whatever data you're trying to get. So we have three calls right here. One, two, three. I type in the tickers. So if we play it, you know, I can type in Apple. I can type in um, NVIDIA, I guess, and AMD. So I have two buttons here. The first one is going to show you the old way of how we did it. And then the new one is going to show the new way of how we did it. So let me just demonstrate real quick. So I am actually going to inspect element here so that we can take a look at our network. So here we are. So let me clear that out. So if we look at our network here, let's do the first old way. So this re regular submit button, it's going to it's it's going to get the network request the old way. So let me clear my network. Okay, so I'm going to press submit and then we're going to watch the network requests happen. So I just click submit and then you see this green line right here. That means it's calling for the data and then the green line is no more. That means it finished calling for the data and we can see our stock tickers updated. NVIDIA is NVIDIA, AMD is AMD, Apple is Apple. Now let's take a look, a little bit closer look at what happened here. So the 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 function that we just invoked right here, the submit, it are these three right here. One, two, three. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, that's the other API. Yeah, it's these three functions right here. So we're calling for our stock ticker data right here. And as you can see, it's in concurrent order. It's, it's, it's asynchronous. So it does this first network call first for probably Apple right there. And then the next one uh, after that finishes um, about two point three seconds later it starts the nvidia network call which is right here and that takes about another second oh see it just got smaller but you can see the nvidia one took about a second there and then we're doing the amd network call right there which took about another second or two so all in all these three api functions api invocations took about five seconds to complete and and you could see that that took a bit a bit of time so let's do it one more time just for demonstration purposes let's do tesla i guess so submit so you, you'll see that these numbers are changing but it takes quite a while that took quite a while it took about five i don't know three to five seconds and that's a really long time so we want to change that for our users so we can see our data really fast much faster so what we did here was we have the exact same submit button. Now go into the code here. And the code is, you know, it's just these three functions. One, two, three. That's it. Um, just run three times pretty much uh, for our original button right here. And you can go to my stock ticker video to see how I really coded that up. But um, the main point of this video is to show you how to speed up your power apps. So uh, we have our three stock ticker calls right here one two three and we could see that in our networks right so i invoked oops there's too many invocations now but remember we invoked that three times and we saw the three chunks of green lines now to speed this up i'm going to go to this button and then all we did 
all we did here was we added concurrent to the beginning and then also that closing bracket at the end, parentheses at the end. And what concurrent does is it calls the network request all at the same time. Everything inside this concurrent parentheses, it makes the call to the network all at the same time. So in the beginning, Power Apps, it just has this asynchronous in the beginning, right? So this is asynchronous, which means it's going to run this, and then it's going to wait until it finishes, and then it's going to run this one, wait until that finishes, and then it's going to run this one. If we put concurrent at the beginning here, it's actually going to start running this, but then it's not going to wait for the thing for the data to return, it's going to start running this even before the data returns. And then it's going to start running this before all the data returns as well. So actually, it's going to run all three of these functions practically at the same time. That's what concurrent does. And you know, you can chop your loading speeds very, very nicely in here. So let's take a look at what happened there. Let's press play. Let's change up our ticker so you can see that the data is changing. Tesla, we'll do NVIDIA. So that, that was our first one. Remember, that took about five seconds. The first one, about two seconds, one second, and then like 1.5 seconds there. So that's how long the first one took. Now we're doing the concurrent button right here, and that one one's going to happen all at the same time, right? We're going to call the network all at the same time. So let's clear our network here so that we can kind of view what happens. So let's click on this button. And OK, ready, set, go. And you can see. That's it. It's already done. All of this just loaded really fast. So let's take a look at what happened. We have our three invoke functions right here. And if we click on them, we can see that this one took up that entire line. But go to the second one, and you can see that it's also in the beginning line. It's, it's at the same time. Third one, it's pretty much at the same time as well. It took a little bit longer than the first two, but it's still it was still only an extra like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds right there. And all in all, these three total invocations took us about 1.5 seconds. That is a huge difference from the five seconds that it took when we used this original function right here. Now let's see the difference. Remember that first one, it, we, we loaded it really slowly. So this one loaded first, and then this one loaded, and then this one loaded. Let's take a look at how fast this one loads visually, not with the, um, with the network request. So let's take a look there. Tesla. So I'm going to press submit a lot and just watch how fast this loads in comparison to the first one. So I'm going to click on this. Boom, boom, boom. That was so much faster than this first one. Let's look at the first one one more time just for comparison's sake. So you don't have to necessarily go back. Now I'm going to do the slow one, which is just the regular submit button without the concurrency and submit. Watch how slow this is. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I didn't really see it, but that is so much slower if we look at the uh, network requests here. So let's just do it one more time because I didn't even get a chance to see it. I mean, it's pretty fast in general, uh, in general, but if you're doing a lot of network requests, this can really help your application out. So let's do it. Submit. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, way slower. Okay, well, this is returning NA because uh, I guess I've reached my limit. But yeah, so concurrency, that is how you make your power apps way faster. Now be aware, if you're if you need the data to to if you need the data before you run your next functions, don't do this concurrency because sometimes there are cases where you need the data to be there before you, you know, run your other functions. But if these functions are just completely individualized and you don't really need um, you don't need the data from the previous function to run the next function, then you don't really need to make these asynchronous and you can just put concurrent at the front and it runs way faster. So that is how you make your power apps faster, guys. That is performance optimization right there. Really easy with one singular function. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know if you guys have any questions. Like, comment, and subscribe and share with your co-workers, whatever, you know, it would really help me out. So yeah, I hope this really helped you as well. So help me out by sharing this video. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. It is 3.30 a.m. and I'll just hop out now. So have a good night. Bye.